So, so the in-memory compute is, if you just go back to first principles and, you know, you try to understand what, what the inference AI workload really does, right? Uh, there is just a lot of matrix math in most of these workloads and uh, they need access to a lot of data. Uh, so you're kind of doing a lot of repetitive and parallel matrix compute in bulk of the dense uh, AI models, right? Uh, there are, you know, you're now beginning to see a lot of sparse models, but still for the most part, there is a lot of matrix math that you got to compute and that's just mostly repetitive parallel compute right. on, on data that you need to access from memory, right? So if you were to kind of, you know, go you know, if you want to go find the maximum bang for your buck and, you know, and the, your, the maximum bang for the buck comes from finding efficiency, then you would go build an engine that is most efficient at doing exactly that, right? And that's what we did. And our in-memory computing engine is exactly the, probably the world's most efficient matrix math engine that we built, right? And what it does is essentially, instead of, you know, typically traditional von Neumann, you know, architectures, the von Neumann architectures have, you know, compute and memory and compute, supposing this is, uh, AI compute and, uh, you know, this is a matrix math engine and there is memory sitting here and then you are essentially pulling data from, and this is a traditional SRAM in most cases. You're, tra you know, you're pulling data from this traditional SRAM one row at a time, right? And uh, feeding it, feeding this compute engine and uh, there is time and energy spent in pulling that data from SRAM to keep this compute fully occupied. In our case, what we did was we just essentially co-located the compute and memory, right? Essentially built a new class of memory. Traditional SRAMs are six transistors. We augmented it with, you know, a few more transistors. And we made it not only a store, a cell, but a store and compute cell. So essentially, we converted the memory into an AI computer, right? And, and now what happened is that first tier of memory, where you keep a lot of the model parameters, are sitting inside the compute array itself, right? So you don't need to go out and fetch data Understood. from memory the way we architected the memory was instead of activating one row at a time we can activate the whole array at a time very similar to systolic you know systolic array so we kind of borrowed ideas from systolic architectures from mm -hmm. you know uh, traditional uh, in memory computing engines right and we put those ideas together into into something that's very unique that saves a lot of energy a lot of time and it's great for infinite.